Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, a robot designed specifically and solely to interpret media, which sadly developed a critical and debilitating video games addiction in its earliest years of operational lifespan, and this is the latest episode of my missed Let's Play. Last time we finished off the puzzles that would unlock the next world we were going to visit on its hub-and-spoke system, which is via a book hidden inside this boat. And so it is a boat time that we go visit this particular age. I'm sorry, that was terrible. Which I believe is called the Stone Ship Age. I love these little run-throughs that give us a nice overview of the area. It's one of the only actually CG animated environments in the entire game. Of course, one of the criticisms misreceived when it came out was that although the art was gorgeous, the game itself was, mechanically, kind of just a slideshow. That, um, you know, these 3D environments, while beautiful, are sort of fake. Well, that's an interesting noise. I'm sure it's going to be relevant to a puzzle. Let's not leave anything switched on until we've had a look around and seen where everything is. Oh, is that water? Okay. That looks like it's flooded, so we can't get in there just yet. Because these are individual static CG renders. They are just static, non-moving pictures. Occasionally animations play over the top of them, or set into them, but there are very few... 3D environments that are actually 3D environments rather than being just, you know, 2D static images. And I've belaboured at that point well enough. Can we reach the lighthouse? It looks like we can. Looks like someone's broken the window here. We have a key, but nothing to nothing to open. And up here we have a lock, so I'm going to guess that <laughs> that's the key to the lock. You never know, though. The devious puzzles have missed. Perhaps that's a key to an entirely different thing. Will it be the key to solving the puzzle? Probably. Okay, so I think I've explored everywhere I can explore in this area currently. So I'm going to assume that this is a pump system, because it sounded like one. So I don't know if that's... Aha! Okay, fantastic. So that lets us get in here. Does it let us get anywhere else? It does not let us get in here, and it does not seem to have changed in here either. So let's take a look down here first. So it's an understandable criticism that at the time games were first going from two-dimensional to three-dimensional, and were first discovering ways in which we could further explore worlds, you know. This is, of course, the same year that Doom came out, the same year that... I can't see shit down here. Is there a light switch or something? I bet there is somewhere. It's still pretty, but I, there's, there was definitely a note in the journal about an, a submersible lantern, so I'm going to assume that somewhere there is some kind of light switch. <laughs> down here? Maybe it's, maybe it's outside. Maybe I have to find a way to put the generator on first. Let's see where we can go next, then. But yeah, so at a time when games were becoming more three-dimensional and more focused on the ability to move freely... This... I can't see shit down here. It also seems not to be where the generator is. Unless that's a button? Are they buttons? No. 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 Nothing. Um, it's an entirely valid criticism as well, but it would have been completely impossible to make this game actually be 3D... Oh, interesting. Okay, we can get down here. It would have been completely impossible to make this game actually be fully 3D at the time. For the simple reason that the processing power it took to just create these images took, you know, days. There's no way to actually run that on the fly. 
Okay, well this should probably float back up now, which means I can unlock it with the key. Not the world's most difficult puzzle, but let's see what happens. Uh, it does not appear to have worked. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that it doesn't actually wait for you to uh, remove all of the all of the water, it just kind of instantaneously changes. Can we not get down? We could get down before. There we go. Some of the some of the click placement to make this work is a bit awkward. Okay, so I've let the water out of it now, but it's still not floating. Oh, maybe closing it back up again stops it from refilling with water, maybe? I bet that's it. I love logic. Don't you love logic? It's my favourite way of examining the world and making things work sensibly. And yep, I'm extremely clever. Also, it's quite funny to me that in this specific scene you can see exactly what I was talking about. The pre-rendered scene had a little animation played over the top of it, and you could just about see the edges of it while it was happening. Right, let's use this key up of here. Unusually for a point-and-click adventure, you don't even have an inventory, which is perhaps another reason why people at the time felt that it was a bit weak as a as a game. As a gamey game, you know, for gamers. Which I believe I mentioned last time was actually some of the, the backlash that this game received, that it, it simply was not sufficiently brain-teasery. This seems like it's what I need. Love to crank a dynamo by hand. What is this, the 1530s? I say, as if that was a commonly used technology at the time, about, you know, 300 years too early, why not? Are we good? I think we're good. I think we're done. I think that's enough. Even here, you can see the very edge of the animation patch that's applied over the static image. It's delightful that you can actually make that out. But yeah. I do think that Mist was a, a fantastic achievement for the time. I think it's frankly remarkable. Is that lit up? Is that more lit than it was previously? I don't believe so. Ah, okay, so we can get in here now. That'll probably let us get to the other one. So I think it was this one that let us get through there. You know, I was expecting my little map of this island to come in handy, but I have not, <laughs> I have not referred back to it yet. Ooh, I think I missed something. What's this? That looks like a secret to me. It just, it just was a genuinely remarkable achievement for the time. Nobody had ever made anything that looked like this. Individual static panels of CG art were a thing that existed, that artists created, but nobody had thought to kind of put them together in this way. Uh, okay. I appear to have made a mistake regardless. Well, okay, I don't know how I got here exactly, but I've clearly found something. Judging from the general state of the decor, I'm going to assume that this is uh, a canal's room since he is the one we associate with violence and brutality. On the other hand, these poisons look very much like they belong to Cirrus, and this is a blue page. I cannot for the life of me remember which book belongs to which guy, but this is clearly a very sinister thing to find. Although, I have something on that note that I'm going to bring up in a moment, I believe. Oh, this is actually here. So I remembered this device existing elsewhere in this, in this particular game world. So this fascinates me because the purpose of this, narratively, in this game, is to show that this man is not to be trusted. That there is something wrong with this guy. In his... in his mind, perhaps. Many different maps of many different worlds. This perhaps was one of the centre of expansion for this... this empire that these boys seem to have building, seem to have been building. Well, I think there's a lot we can see here that's untrustworthy. But the reason why we think it's untrustworthy is interesting to me. So, culturally speaking, stories are told using iconography. 
you know, pictures mean things. And so the, the message that this is trying to send is that behind behind this potentially veneer of sincerity, this veneer of, of beauty even, there lurks an evil, an unpleasantness, a nasty thing. However, that is reliant very muchly, which is a dumb way to phrase that, but whatever. This is incredibly reliant on our like modern cultural perceptions. This game was made by Americans and it and it ties into their you know, perceptions of things. This is this is gonna get on my nerves. How do I turn it off? That's where I was. I'm gonna think about this for a second. Okay, well I haven't figured it out. I'm gonna try flooding it again and see if that resets it. It probably won't, but you never know. Perhaps I need to go recharge the generator again. Possibly I overloaded it in some way, so let's see what we can do. Anyway, so the reason why this is interesting is that... Yeah, yeah, we have to redo the generator. Oh well, cranky cranky. Time for spanky, as nobody has ever fucking said in the entire history of humanity. Anyway, so there's this interesting aspect, which is that that imagery is only tied in that way because of the, the cultural perspective of the people who created it. This game was made by American artists, and therefore it reflects American attitudes towards iconography. Americans have often been, and are currently, very squeamish about death. But that's not true in all societies. It's not even true in the societies, you know, historical societies from, you know, Anglic... Anglican? Anglic? That's not the word. A like Anglo-derived societies. The English Victorians, after all, were obsessed with death. They fucking loved death. They couldn't get enough of death. Memento Mori fucking everywhere. Memento Mori all over the place. And pictures of skulls. They loved it. it was, they were crazy about it. So, to them, you know, if, if this was a device owned by a Victorian gentleman, it would perhaps be this more of a kind of like a technology toy that serves this cultural purpose of the memento mori, the reminder that you should be humble because one day you will die. Ah, oh, nice to see that um, office desk toys haven't changed in, well, I was going to say hundreds of years because, you know, everything here looks all, re you know, uh, you know, late renaissance-y. But um, obviously these guys exist in another dimension with dimensional travel capabilities, so who's to say? <laughs> It's nice to see that desk toys are a cultural innovation that occurs in every culture, let's say. Ah, red page. So this must actually be the other boy's room. I still can't remember which boy is which, though. I think red is... Oh, oh, that's a nice little touch. That is the flag or the symbol of the raiders from the Machine Age for whom the fortress was created to defend against. But this is the this is the iconography of of Cirrus, his his love of refined things, but his sinister accoutrement. So yeah, if a Victorian gentleman had a device like that, it would simply seem as if he were trying to remain humble with one of these particular in particularly interesting objects that they that they indulge in. Oh, is this another passageway, or is this the same one? Aha. Oh, interesting. Okay, this explains why I got so confused. It looks like the two bedrooms are carved into the rock, both of them. Cirrus and Akinar. Which means that this is Akinar's. Which means, therefore, that this is his device. And his weird, creepy ribcage. <laughs> So that makes me wonder then, what's in the secret passage? But yeah, so these people are not from our culture. This is something fantasy writers often... a mistake they often make, perhaps? But unfortunately, it's also one that is kind of necessary because, you know, I believe there's a famous essay which basically says if you, if you detach your fantasy too far from reality, you just realise that you're writing nonsense. Which is where the the trope, which is referred to on TV tropes as call a rabbit a smip, originates because, you know, if you rename everything, then uh, nobody can understand a word you're fucking saying. 
Okay, well, I think what I need to figure out now is how, if possible, to get down here with the lights on. Let's have another look. But yeah, so this iconography is presented to us with the assumption that we will understand it. However, these are people from another world who travel between worlds constantly. There isn't any reason to assume that they will be able or that they would have the same associations. Perhaps to them, the fact that he owns this means something else entirely. And it's not at all the same as the meaning that we have. Those are definitely the underwater lanterns that were in the in the, the booklet. That's one there. But how do I turn them on? I haven't seen any big buttons or anything. It seems like it seems like it must probably be related to the mysterious uh, the mysterious secret room down there. On the other hand, up here we do have this uh, this telescope, which itself seems like it must be related to a puzzle because again i brought this up previously but there is this um difficulty in point and click adventure games often where you can't really tell what is and isn't part of a puzzle and how this ties into the uh the literacy of games because oh is that pointing to something does that matter oh okay okay so this is the blinking light on top of the lighthouse at 135 degrees that, that that rondel in the underground had a had a north marker and then markers all around the edges and clicking one of those was what caused the alarms to go off. So presumably, if I click on the button at one hundred and thirty five degrees, then that'll be the answer. But I'm I'm a modern person, so I don't remember how the degrees relate to north and south. If I assume that north is zero degrees, then then I can go 135. I'll just note that down. I also quite like the gentle music in this area. All of the different zones of the game have their own soundscapes, which I believe were composed by the game's um, by the game company's financial director, which is fascinating. On a similar note, actors in the game are actually mostly members of the company. In fact, Akinar's actor actually also plays Atrus, his father. There's only, there's only two actors in the entire game, and one of them plays two roles. <laughs> this was very much back in the day of very tight budgets, and people being accepting and understanding if your game... You know... Had to had to skimp on a few things, especially considering... Alright, so is that is that zero degrees? How many of these are there? So, there are 32 buttons here. I'm very bad at maths, but even I can know that 360 divided by 32 equals 11.25, and you can't even see the edit as I went to my phone to do that calculation for me. So that means that each of these buttons is 11.25, which means if I want to get to 135 degrees, I need to go, uh, oh god, I think 12 steps, so, 0, 1, 2... Oh! Oh! Okay. Huh. Can I get out, please? Excuse me? Hello? Can I, can I go? <laughs> Noisy. Okay. So. That's the wrong way. Okay, so I guess this is on a timer, actually, which would make sense. I assumed that this was based on, um... That once it was charged it was full and I had tripped some kind of trap that, that ended the charge early. But it looks like that was actually just on a timer. So if I run off and charge it up again, I should be able to run in and just take care of it. So I've given the Jenny a good cranking and here we are back again. Right, back to what I was doing. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, Twelve. Here goes nothing. <gasps> it worked. Fantastic. I am a I am a goddamn genius. Do you know that? I am incredibly fucking smart, and you all owe me a round of applause. I think. Right. Let's have an actual look at what's down there, or perhaps 
let's have an actual look at what's down there next episode because you know what i've had a migraine all day and i've successfully managed to do all of this incredibly difficult puzzling i say facetiously i do actually remember not being able to solve any of these puzzles as a kid so i guess i really just have developed my brain in the last 15 years good for me i guess anyway that's all from me thank you so much for watching Please make sure to like, subscribe and especially share, and check out my Twitch channel for regular streams. On Twitter you can find announcements and one tweet micro reviews, and if you like what I do and want to support me you can donate on Patreon or Ko-fi. The links are all in the description and thank you so much for watching.